Hey, come see us live. We're doing our Rumble Time show September 27th in Los Angeles. We'll be in Tempe, Arizona, and we'll be in Burbank, California. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for tickets. So what this shows you is this uh, marks the end of the, the, the shift from the Democratic Party into the party of George Bush and Dick Cheney is now complete. Uh. And it's not they're not afraid that Dick Cheney is now on board with being a Democrat and supporting the Democrats presidential candidate uh, over the Republican. They're bragging about it. This is a this is called Harris wins. This is a Twitter account called Harris wins. It says breaking Dick Cheney just announced he will be voting for Kamala Harris. Wow. See, it says, wow, because like us, she she can't believe Dick Cheney's still alive. I got ready to say the same joke. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah. There's over 200 Republicans. It's the whole neocon list. The, that the, did it. They're the, all yeah, there was Harris because she's the war party. To, to, exactly. Because they all agree on the important things. The important thing is to make it look like it's a positive by putting the word wow at the end. So the doctor removed the wrong leg in surgery, but at least I have the bad leg that still needs removing. Wow. <laughs> That's what this is like. Uh, and I think it's all it's important for us to stretch every day. And I'm going to keep this story with me to show my shit lib Hollywood friends just to watch their elaborate circle jerk disallay contortions to explain this one, especially after years and years of them using anything Republican as a social cudgel. Now, Dick Cheney, easily, easily one of the top two most evil characters in the world over the last 50 years is got to be Dick Cheney. And they're wow. Isn't that great? Wow. And so he's irredeemable. And the other side, you take the best of the Democrat Party, which would have been like Tulsi and RFK Jr. And they're on Trump's side. You're seeing an establishment versus anti-establishment. And Trump is not fully anti-establishment. No, much more so than Kamala. Well, as he, I, he as I explained, on two major things, the Ukraine war, which is huge. There's a half a million people died in that. And he's willing to talk to North Korea. And nobody else is. So that's important to me. And, you know, given those choices, Trump is the better choice. And they're they're insanely going after him. That's not an endorsement of all of the other dumb stuff he did, <laughs> pulling out of missile defense treaties, you know, all, all his support for Israel, journeying up the, war for the Iran, bullshit he does. Soleimani. Yeah, his, his yeah. bullshit rhetoric no. in Israel, his bullshit rhetoric with yep. Venezuela. Yep. I, I mean, a he, he, lot, lot of horrible things about Donald Trump to oppose for sure. Like, I made a film called Trump Sinus Ball and Chain, one hour long, just bashing him, the Kushners, that whole clique. And people still call me a Trump supporter <laughs> whenever I whenever I'm like, well, I'm glad we got out of TPP and NAFTA and it, I didn't want to be in the Paris Accords and that's whatever I agree with. I don't I'm glad we didn't uh, escalate the war in Syria and things like this. I don't want to go to war. If I was like, oh, so you, you just love Trump. I'm like, man. I ripped on him before it was cool. I even made a movie about all the corruption. All the, it was funny is they net all the stuff in that movie. There's plenty of things, criminal things they could indict him for, but they can't because they're guilty of all the of same. The same that's right. That's why it took them so long to, to impeach him. They had to find a crime that Trump committed that they also weren't guilty of. So here's that's very hard for Hillary. <laughs> it's very hard for Money Hillary. Money laundering. What? <laughs> so. Uh, the transformation of the Democratic Party into the party of Bush Cheney is complete. Instead of this shocking Kamala Harris supporters into rethinking exactly what the F is happening, they look at this endorsement as a good thing. Uh, They're brainwashed and brain dead Stepford voters. That, that's what this is. I'd argue Bush and Cheney went to the left side. Because it was Democrats that started the First World War, the Second World War, Vietnam, and Korea. They were traditionally the war party. And George Bush and Cheney, that's why they call them neocons, is like they, they went over to that side with bigger government, more government spending, and more war. Well, here, Bernie Sanders was asked about this. <laughs> this is, watch the, this guy. What a, this guy is such a He's clown. Gonna trigger them. He's such a, what'd you say? He's <laughs> Bernie Sanders triggers everybody. <laughs> He's such a clown. Well, it's because he broke our hearts. We we really believed what he said. I did. It's sad because you know he knows better and he still toes the line. Mm -hmm. That's that's what's sad. The sad thing is he knows better. 
So let's watch this. Uh, Senator, before I let you go, I do have to ask you about her recent endorsements by two people who are not progressives at all. Of course, I'm talking about Dick and Liz Cheney. <laughs> this week, they said they're going to support her. They're going to vote for her. It's worth noting, uh, former Congresswoman Liz Cheney voted with former President Trump more than 90% of the time, was quite critical when uh, President Biden picked her as his running mate. Would you welcome seeing Liz Cheney out on the campaign trail? Well, Kristen, what I think Dick and Liz Cheney are saying is that in this existential moment in American history, it's not just issues. Cheney and I agree on nothing, no issues. But what we hmm. do, I agree with Cheney on anything. No, but I am being blackmailed and threatened with unspeakable tortures by Dick Cheney. So maybe <laughs> here we go. Who believe in is that the United States should retain its democratic foundations. And it's not just Cheney. I think there is a significant number of Republicans that say, well, you know, I may not agree with the vice president on this issue or that issue, but I cannot support somebody who is a pathological liar, somebody who fomented a, a insurrection to overthrow the election wow. return. So I applaud the Cheneys for their courage in defending democracy, uh, obviously, on courage. all the issues. We have very different points of view. All right. Uh, Cheney and I agree on nothing, but that's not going to stop me from doing what I'm told. They're going to punch me in the eye again and arrest you my agree wife. agree on Jan 6. <laughs> you agree yeah. on that narrative. Yeah, <laughs> they certainly do. I like how he says that. He says, we agree on the Democratic found maintaining Democratic foundations. What? And when I said, you mean like rigging their primary, then throwing out the results of that primary anyway, and then disenfranchising 14 million voters and having the presidential nominee installed by party elites and billionaire donors without any votes or any input from the voting public? You mean like those Democratic foundations? Like huh. Cheney supporting Ahmed Chalabi and that click in Iraq and overrunning that government and installing one. <laughs> All the color coded revolutions are those democratic. What is, it's not it's not getting, it's not what Bernie Sanders cannot support. It's the part that he can support that bothers everybody. Huh. That's the part. He's gotta have an excuse. He say, Well, it's J six. Yeah. J six. J six is worse than October seventh and nine eleven combined. You had J six is it's so it's like, okay, you let him in. These people walking around, they didn't bring weapons. It's not an insurrection. It was a protest. And you contrast that with the mostly peaceful protests where they're setting car lots on fire and some people died and just running in and looting stores openly. That's a riot. This was a protest. And it, what they did is they physically interrupted uh, the count when, before it got even to Arizona about election discrepancies. They were just not even going to let the public see that. And they didn't. And then they convened in the middle of the night and uh, and Joe Biden became the, selected president. There's a guy and you're who, not allowed to uh, question it at all. He went on. But, Theo, know, he went on Theo Vaughn legal. show and said that he got cheated twice in, in, in his run for the Democratic nomination. And here he is saying, yeah, but I got to support those people who cheated me without extracting anything from them for my support. Hillary Nothing. said she got cheated. So did Al Gore. You know, they're like, oh, well, we, it was rigged, blah, blah, blah. That's when right. Trump says it. It's illegal. That's you right. You can't do that. We've determined this and you have to agree with us. Here's what the, Glenn the same system that constantly lies about everything else. Here's what Glenn Greenwald said. He said, aside from calling Dick Cheney a fascist, racist, war profiteering, war criminal, liberals also claimed he only became vice president because the Supreme Court stole the 2000 election from him. Now they're all proclaiming that Cheney supports Kamala to save American democracy. The point isn't Democrats are hypocrites. Hypocrisy is too pervasive in politics to bother denouncing it. The point is that Cheney doesn't give a shit about democracy. He supports Kamala because she'll serve his longstanding agenda better than Trump. Yes. Yep. That's it's why. Because Kamala will continue the war in Ukraine against Russia. That's their big issue. Uh, Trump and Vance are not interested in that war. They want out. That's right. That's what that. That's what Bobby Kennedy said at the rally at the Trump rally, and everybody cheered it. Kamala's campaign manager, Max Blumenthal, has enthusiastically welcomed the endorsement of Dick Cheney, stating he's deep. 
She deeply respects his courage to put country over party. So the Kamala 24 deeply respects one of the most devious war criminals alive and considers him courageous. Dick Cheney disseminated fake intelligence linking Saddam Hussein to Al Qaeda, pushed the WMD hoax, ordered the unmasking of Valerie Plame as an undercover CIA officer as retaliation for her husband, Ambassador Joe Wilson, exposing the Bush administration's lie about Saddam Hussein obtaining enriched uranium from Niger. Cheney's machinations were aimed at guaranteeing a U.S. invasion and occupation that wound up leaving a million Iraqis Iraqis dead, brought ISIS to the region, and maimed or killed tens of thousands of Americans. The former vice president simultaneously presided over a no-bid $7.5 billion contract in Iraq for Hill- Halliburton, where he served as CEO. And he established a secret torture program that yielded worthless intelligence. To this day, he's not only unrepentant about his torture chambers— He's proud of them. The Kamala campaign wants us to forget Cheney's record. We are supposed to see him as a hawkish but wise elder crossing the aisle for the good of the republic. Well, the reality is Cheney did far more damage to the country and world than Donald Trump has. It is such a colossal insult that Cheney is able to enjoy his twilight years in a mansion on Maryland's eastern shore, counting his money without ever having faced a trial for any of his titanic crimes, while Trump becomes the first former U.S. president convicted of a felony for concealing a measly payoff to a porn actor. Cheney is supporting Kamala for the same reason as Bill Kristol the McCain family, and an array of Bush area neocons because she is an empty vessel for the post 9-11 security state and will joyfully consolidate the Democrats as the party of endless war. The 1,160,000 shares of Halliburton stock that Cheney received when he retired are also a likely part of the calculus. I just changed it to actress instead of actor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when he, he mentioned Valerie Plame getting ousted. It was worse than that because she worked for Brewster Jennings and Associates, which was a front for the CIA. So her entire team tracking nuclear weapons proliferation also got outed with her. And as far as that was about the lies about yellow cake uranium from Niger, but you know, it, it didn't stop there. Cheney reiterated the BS from, uh, from the PNAC group about, Muhammad Atta getting anthrax in Prague and from Iraqis. And yet Iraq didn't have anthrax, neither did Al-Qaeda. There was no meeting in Prague. And even though the Israelis said they witnessed the meeting, they lied. But James Woolsey, who was an Epstein client, brought that back. And then it got reported by Gary Schmidt and Fred Barnes, who were working for Robert Kagan and William Crystal in the Project for New American Century. And Shaney was the guy that amplified that. He and Condi Rice lied, connecting Iraq to 9-11, when they had nothing to fucking do with 9-11, and we invaded Iraq and killed nearly a million people. Well said. Uh, well, here's a, here's you want to see the reaction of uh, Bobby Kennedy, who was a Democrat his whole life. Yeah. Until they cheated him, which I told him they would. They cheated him and rigged their primary, so he had to leave and run as an independent because the Democratic Party is so corrupt. The last thing they believe in is real democracy. And the last thing they want is for people to have a say in who's going to be the presidential nominee. He's, it was so bad, he had to leave the party. Oh, Kennedy. Robert yeah, Kennedy. A Kennedy. And again, we don't agree with his policies on Israel and other things. No. Well, let's be nuanced here and see what, he said, what he's getting punished well, for. Well, here's what he said. Cheney's resuscitation of the Democratic presidential nominee finalizes the hijack of the party of peace by warmongering neocons and the military-industrial complex, there is nothing left of the party of JFK and RFK. So couldn't, he's 100% correct about that. And you can see I agree with it so much I liked it. Yeah, I'll uh, go in and get that one like too. Yeah, his, his father and his uncle did oppose those forces, and what happened to them? Uh, they both got killed, I think, uh, if, I rem- yeah. if I remember my history correctly. Uh, real vernacular says I applaud the Cheneys for their courage in defending democracy that allowed Dick Cheney to murder millions of innocent people with zero accountability 
It was from that era where we had Dick Bush and Colin in the top offices uh -huh. saying we got screwed. If, if you want to know why JFK got killed, go see my pinned tweet. It's on the very top. That was the mode of what happened to JFK. And I man, if that story would break, there never would have been an Iraq war or a Syrian war, any of this stuff. It would have stopped right there in the 60s. Well, I was told, Brian, I was told uh, in a Democratic Party email that I would be receiving some free joy if I support Kamala. <laughs> you're, you're just being a big downer. That's free joy. It's hard to listen to her talk. She sounds like she's always on the verge of crying or something. And she wants to do this like big sister coffee talk, like to try to be relatable. But she laughs like a hyena. And every time she tries to explain something, it's like listening to a kid doing a book report that didn't read the book. And they're just sitting there saying the same thing six different ways. It's embarrassing. And that we have, what, 300 plus million people in the United States. And this is the best they have to offer. I swear they kept Joe in there because Kamala couldn't win a primary, even though they knew he was senile just long enough so he could like hand the baton to her. And now they've got the entire machine, Google and the rest of them pushing this creature on us. And she's not going to really be the president, just like Joe is not there either. It's Anthony Blinken and the donor class that make all the decisions. They just have a placeholder there. And this really shows it to you with Biden shaking hands with John Cena. You know, he's out there just, you know, no one's in front of him. He doesn't know where he is. He's been like that for years. We all knew that. That wasn't some surprise in the Trump debate. So who's been running the country? Because you have, you have a vapid, vacant old man who probably has dementia. It, it doesn't matter what concoction of drugs they put in him. They can't amp him up with enough uh, amphetamines for him to get a few sentences right. So if he isn't doing it, who is? Who's running the show right now? Because it's not Biden and it's not Harris. They just want a placeholder there to rubber stamp their agendas. And Kamala is one of those. She supports every war or the entire foreign policy, the MIC, the entire apparatus. She will go with it. They're just there. It's been this way since Grant started. That's why we have lobbyists. They used to meet in the lobbies of hotels with Ulysses Grant. It's been like that since Lincoln messed it up. We have special interests that run democracy. And they're able to get away with it because we don't have a free press that can call them out on the corruption. Free speech would fix all these things because free speech holds them accountable. And then when people take bribes, there's consequences for it. But if there's no accountability, there's no consequences. So it will never end until we do something about this mass media juggernaut. That is why the most important issue, you're not going to win politically or socially until you win in the media. You have to get the media first to fix the other things, which is why shows like this are so important. This is the even though it's on, this is on Rumble and can only be on Rumble, can't even be on YouTube. <laughs> At least there's somewhere to say this. There wasn't in the past. I think you could probably put it on Substack and X too. So, Ryan, why do you, why, why do you support Trump? That's my question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a Ron Paul libertarian type. Like, I, uh, I don't support these wars. I just see it as, look, being realistic, it's Trump or Harris, honestly. And, you know, I will hold my nose and support Trump over that, although I'd prefer neither because uh, it, it's just childish to say, well, I'm just, you know, doesn't matter. It does matter. Like she is a lot worse. Well, and yes, yeah, the lesser two evils. Yeah, lesser. That is better, even though it isn't good. What, but what? I, it's just like something you have to do while you work on the other things. As I just said, you have to work on breaking the media monopoly or you're never going to get a good candidate. What I uh, what they're never going to let go of the media. That's what Bill Clinton's job was in 1996 when he did the Telecommunications Act, which took us from 50 giant media companies down to six. And right. everybody was like, hey, that's going to be anti. The whole point is that you have different voices in the media. You can't just have six companies controlled by a handful of billionaires. That's bad for democracy. And Bill Clinton's response to that was, no, no, there's the Internet now. And so that will be the new. But now, of course, they've they they've of course then the the government in collusion with the military industrial complex, big pharma, and those social media and and big tech, they control that too, and so and it was in the Twitter files and the twi and the Twitter files. You know files that applied to Meta and the rest of them. And it really, it started with Lincoln closing down the newspapers. Like 
when he did that after the war, they they never recovered because they got such a head start because all the competition was illegal or thrown in jail. And so from then on, and then you get Grant, and it's just been mercantilism ever since, where he married corporation and state, and they went out west and genocided the American Indians, and they kept going west all the way to the Philippines. It's never it's never been reversed. And when it started to get that way, you have people like Bill Clinton come in and go, no, no, we're going to monopolize this again. And when the Internet starts to grow, no, no, the three litter spooks get in there and say, you got to get rid of this person and that person, get rid of her, get rid of him, not allowed to say this. And they do shadow banning, outright banning, amplifying kook stuff. And we all and this came out in the Twitter files. So this is a known thing. And yet nothing's done to correct it. That's why. The brand new, new media, you could say, with Rumble, X, Substack. X is so-so. But Rumble, Substack, for sure, and Telegram, they're going to go after them hard because that's where you actually have free speech because you don't really have it on Twitter, and you definitely don't have it on Meta or YouTube. So so why do you think a guy like Peter Thiel, who everybody said is a, a big – does he does, did he found Rumble, or is he just a big investor in it? He was an investor in it, and I think they what they wanted to do was like he was like a DeSant, a DeSantos guy, and <laughs> they wanted he wanted to have his own say, but it's just more like the uh, two wings of the same bird type yeah. of thing. And it, what happened though is so Rumble went out trying to grab Web Liberties of stuff that doesn't matter, stuff that's not political, you know, like the Red Pill dude or whatever, just things that get eyeballs to grow their company. But well, those people started getting political and their whole brand rested on the case of, well, we don't ban you like YouTube does. Because who in the world would go to Rumble if they have a YouTube? There's so many more eyeballs on YouTube. The only people that were on Rumble were the YouTube refugees. Well, all the, they're, they're refugees from YouTube for a reason. So Rumble ends up gathering all these people. And then because of bit shoot and Odyssey behind as options, Rumble can't back off from what they started if they ban one person everyone's like oh rumble's the same and they're all going to leave and they're all going to go to bit shooter odyssey so those other companies keep rumble honest because its entire brand rests on not censoring people now they do turn the volume down they will not put people on the front page that don't like stuff like that i i think that's my opinion but and, and it has promoted a lot of like infotainment garbage or whatever that might be the better business model. That's where the money is. They do what they got to do. You used to have to pay to use Rumble way back when I started it. You had to pay them for the privilege to be on Rumble. Now, uh, Rumble's free. And I think it's the place for now for free speech. But then you see what happens is states can ban Rumble itself. Like Rumble cannot. It's, ba- it's banned in Rumble Brazil. In France. It's, you it's, can't get it in Russia. You can't get it in Brazil. Because they just came in and said, you got to implement these policies against free speech. And they said, how about no? We'll just not be in your country. So you got a VPN to rumble. And it's owned by other people. Like Chris is good on free speech. So Teal may have gave it the seed money. And they're like, thanks. <laughs> but we're not doing what you want. And it's, it's too late. They've invested so much in so many creators and so much into the platform. They can't turn that around. And so they don't know what to do. So what you'll see is them trying to find some pretext to ban it, just like they want to ban TikTok. Same thing. They didn't control TikTok, so they're like, get rid of it. I don't think they can get rid of TikTok, but they can kind of strong arm the people who do own TikTok into saying, all right, you need to ban these these people, these creators. Don't say Palestinians are people too. Don't say these things. Uh, get rid of those. Because TikTok's pretty bad on censorship. Yeah, I don't they're know the why worst. People are like, "Oh, go over there." I'm like, Pff. "No, they're right. the worst." They're really bad. Well, no, Facebook is the worst. But then, yeah, TikTok. Well, I'm doing a show called Rumble Time, which I hope uh, becomes popular enough that we could do it in a studio and have a show that looks exactly like a real TV show that competes with Bill Maher because Bill Maher is ripe to be taken down. And oh, yeah. uh, and, you know, he's got a lot of neocon talking points. He doesn't even realize that they're neocon talking points. I think Bill Mars, you know, he, he his heart's in the right place, but he's wrong about so many things. And uh, so we're doing the show Rumble Time. The next one is September uh, 27th. And it's here. We're doing it out of a theater, Two Roads Theater here in Studio City. We're going to try and make it look 
nice, but it's not a studio. It's not a TV studio that costs a lot of money. And so hopefully we can find the funders to put us in a real TV studio. And that's my fingers crossed that we can do that show. Because the whole, you're right, the whole edge of Rumble is that you have free speech. And yep, you don't have free speech point. anywhere else. And no, no other social media gives you free speech. Rumble does. That's their edge. And uh, I'm trying to popularize that for them. So, all right, over Same to Same here. I've been, I've been pushing it for many years. Get on Rumble. Get on Rumble. In fact, every show I go on, they know you have to go to Rumble. Yeah. Because Dawson's Dawson, and you can't do that on YouTube. And I, I know. I'm a fan on yeah. YouTube. Yeah. You're not allowed. You can tell the truth to a point. But you, there's a whole series of things you are that are just the third rail. You can't touch it. And the problem is those are the things we have to talk about the most. I mean, if you're not talking about those things, then what does it matter? It's like talking about World War II and not mentioning Germany. How can you do it? Hey, I believe in having a substantial percentage of my financial future, meaning my retirement fund, secured with gold and silver. You know that. You know what I think about what's going to happen with the stock market. And that's why I decided to partner up with Colonial Metals Group. They helped me set up a safe and secure self-directed IRA where I have access to my assets no matter what the stock market or, for that matter, what the government is doing. Let the team of experts at Colonial Metals Group help you protect your family's future. We've put together a special offer for our audience. Click on the link in the description below or call a special 800 number and you're going to receive a safe and up to 10 grand in free silver. That's real. That could happen. Find out how that could happen. Go to colonialmetalsgroup.com slash jimmy dash door dash show. So colonialmetalsgroup.com slash jimmy dash door dash show or call 888 910 1419. Hey, come see us live. We're doing our Rumble Time show September 27th in Los Angeles. We'll be in Tempe, Arizona, and we'll be in Burbank, California. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for tickets. Mm -hmm.